Hello, seventh graders, and welcome to lesson 4.3 on proportional relationships and graphs. Now we're going to be using the stuff we learned in 4.1 and 4.2 on constants of proportionality and unit rates. But now we're going to see how it applies to a graph. All right, example one. Most shower heads that were manufactured before 1994 used five gallons of water per minute. Is the relationship between the number of gallons of water and the number of minutes a proportional relationship? Well, each minute, five gallons of water are used. So for two minutes, we're going to multiply two times five to see how many gallons are used. And that would be 10. So in two minutes, there are 10 gallons used. In three minutes, there are 15 gallons used. If there's 35 gallons used, we divide 35 by five, and that would be in seven minutes. And then in 10 minutes, there's 50 gallons used. There is a constant of proportionality here, a constant rate of change, and that, remember K is what we use to represent that. K would be five, there are five gallons per minute. That's our constant ratio. So yes, this is a, <laughs> this is a proportional relationship. Yes, because K equals five, there's a constant rate of change. All right, so now let's see how this would look on a graph. We're gonna write the data in the table as ordered pairs. So we're going to use time for our x variable and water for our y variable. So we have first ordered pair is this one, 1 comma 5, that's right here. So now we have 2 comma 10, 3 comma 15, 7, 35, and 10, 50. All right, now we're gonna plot the ordered pairs. Remember when we plot ordered pairs, we always, always, always go over first then up, x comma y. So one five is gonna be right here. Over one, up five. Next one was at 210, then we add 315, 735, and 1050. All right, so let's connect those dots. Notice how a proportional relationship is graphed with a straight line. It's because it's linear, we'll learn what that word means later in the year. Um, all right, let's look at question E. If the shower head is used for zero minutes, how many gallons of water will be used? Well, if you haven't used it yet, you haven't used any water, so that would be a point at zero, zero, the ordered pair 0, 0 represents this situation. This location is also called the origin. Hopefully you learned that in sixth grade. Otherwise, now you know. That's called the origin, 0, 0. 0, 0 is an ordered pair on almost all proportional relationships. All right, if you continue the table to include 23 minutes, would the point 23, 125 be on this graph? Why or why, why, or why not? How do we figure this out? We check if 23 times 5 is equal to 125, and it is not. So no, this point would not be on the graph. All right, in lesson 4.2, we learned how to use a table to find the constant of proportionality or the constant rate of change. Remember, when we have a table and we use them as ordered pairs, we can plot that information and then find out if it's a proportional relationship. Now, the graphs of proportional relationships are gonna have two important characteristics. First, they're gonna be a straight line. So this is a good thing to write in your notes, but they're gonna be a straight line. And then second, they're gonna go through the origin. So they're gonna cross the point zero, zero. Remember, they have a constant rate of change, constant of proportionality, and when we're just multiplying, if we plug in zero for one number, we're gonna get zero for the other number. All right, so let's look at this specific example. A house cleaning company charges $45 per hour. Is the relationship a proportional relationship? Explain. Um, so the total cost is $45 per one hour. Each hour increase, it's gonna increase by $45. And the constant rate of change is 45. So yes, that's a proportional relationship. Notice two times 45 is 90, three times 45 is 135, and so on. So now we're going to write the data in the table as ordered pairs. That's what these are, so 1 comma 45. We're using the time as the x variable, 
and the cost as the y variable. Just a little side note here, time is almost always represented with x because it is the independent variable. You plug in the number of time, and then cost is almost always the y variable because it depends on the amount of time. All right, so step three, we're gonna graph those ordered pairs, and it's already graphed for us. Here's 145, here's 290, here's 335, and so on. Notice when we connect those points, it crosses through 0, 0, and it's a straight line. It goes through the origin, it's a straight line. All right, that is a proportional relationship. Let's do number one together. Jared rents bowling shoes for $6 and pays $5 per bowling game. Is the relationship a proportional relationship? Well, let's look at each pair and plot it and see if it fits our criteria. So our first pair looks like it's gonna be at oops, 1, 11. Our second pair will be at 2, 16, 3, 21, and 4, 26. All right, now I'm gonna plot those points. One is at 11, two is at 16, three, 21, four, 26. All right, when I connect these dots, it is a straight line, but it does not go through the origin. In fact, we know exactly where it starts. It starts at $6 because he had to pay for bowling shoes before playing a game. Because it doesn't go through the origin, it doesn't start at zero, zero, this is not a proportional relationship. So no, even though it's a straight line, it doesn't go through the origin, not a proportional relationship. All right, next example. The graph shows the relationship between time in minutes and the number of miles Damon runs. Write an equation for this relationship. Uh, remember when we write an equation, we're looking for the constant of proportionality, k, which tells us how the graph changes. It tells us the relationship between x and y. So let's find the constant of proportionality. We're gonna look at the points 25, 2.5, and since we already know that this is a proportional relationship, we can find the unit rate to find k. So Damon runs 2.5 miles in 25 minutes. We set this up as a ratio of miles over minutes, and 2.5 divided by 25 is 1 tenth, or 0 0.1, and that is going to be our k, our constant of proportionality. So to write our equation, we can write y equals 1 tenth x, or y equals 0.1x. We're just substituting that constant in for k in the equation y equals kx. So this is an important thing to remember. All right, let's reflect on a couple things before we get to the assignment for today. Um, what does the point zero, zero on the graph represent? Remember zero, zero is the origin. In this graph, it would represent that if zero minutes have passed before the time has begun, Damon has run zero miles, which makes sense. If he hasn't started running, he obviously hasn't went anywhere. So in this case, it represents zero minutes zero miles. All right, suppose you do a graph representing the relationship y equals 1 eighth x between time in minutes and the number of miles Esther runs. How would the graph compare to 1 for Damon? Okay, so Damon's was 1 tenth x. If we draw a graph for 1 eighth x, well, let's picture these points here. Here, Damon's is at 1 10. Esther's would be at 1, 8. Here, Damon's is at 2, 20. Esther's would be at 2, 16. So if I connect a line through those points, notice Esther's is a little bit steeper. In the same amount of minutes, she's traveled slightly more miles. All right, let's talk through number four together here. The graph shows the relationship between the distance a bicyclist travels and the time in hours. Notice time is x, distance is y. So what does the point 460 represent? That point is right here, by the way. That means after four hours, the bicyclist has gone 60 miles. So we're gonna write four hours, 60 miles. 
All right, what is the constant of proportionality? Uh, miles and hours are an easy one for us to remember which order we do this in because miles per hour is a very common unit. So miles is gonna be on top, hours is gonna be on bottom, 60 divided by four is 15. So the bicyclist is traveling 15 miles per hour. The constant of proportionality is 15. So to write the equation, we would say y equals 15x. And then let's plug in some variables just to make sure it works. Um, I noticed that point is at 460, so if I plug in 60 equals 15, yep, 15 times 4, we're good. All right, your homework today is going to be to do numbers 1 through 6 on page 132 and some problems on 133. Um, 1 through 6, you are completing the table for 1 and 2, and then 3 through 6, you're just explaining if it's proportional or not. Remember, those qualifiers are does it go through the origin and is it a straight line. On page 133, your homework is going to be to do numbers numbers 8 through 11.